So, the task in hand at the moment is looking into this selector. This is what I got from Limeworks Parts in America. I got it a while back. So the, Id the idea of it is you convert your three-speed manual selector to work with to work with the automatic transmission. It's got this really nice linkage and stuff like that. At the same time, I'm wanting to scheme how the pedal works. Both the uh, the park brake, that thing I'm using, which is going to go here. I bought this from Performance Online. It's quite a nicely engineered piece. It comes with the uh, with the pedal as well. And I've got some footage which I might be able to find and put up now of me trying to fit it. Like it doesn't, you don't get instructions for this stuff. Does it go up under there? Does it go on the inside? I couldn't get it to fit any which way. So I kind of thought to myself, well, I need to make my own one. And I'm thinking maybe I can adapt this. Maybe I can start something completely new. But I think what I'm planning on doing is because the firewall, so I've seen it where people have just cut off here, or maybe they've just got a piece which goes from there bolts to the firewall and they have a big spreader plate on the other side because the firewall isn't strong enough for you to keep pushing pushing the brake pedal force on it so I'm thinking that first thing to do is cut this off in the middle here and then offer it up maybe install the booster and uh, go from there see how it looks see where I want the pedal I think that's the thing with a lot of these parts. I mean, I looked for a long time when I realised that the underfloor booster wasn't going to work, and that's what I've got, and I've got to convert it to work with this type of arrangement, and I've looked at the parts, and they're all interchangeable. I've seen it where someone had the brake booster all the way up in there, so they had like a, a right angle... Um, mechanism so that the, the pedals actuation can leave it across to the to the right so that the brake boost is on the inside under the dash. I'm not overly fussed about hiding it and that seems like a lot of engineering work. I'm going to see if I can find the images and flash them up for you because it was actually quite a piece of work. It was on a truck like this. Um, but yeah, so I, that's the plan. I'm just going to kind of fidget around. So that's this piece trimmed down and I guess it wants to go somewhere somewhere there. Like that. Need to get the pedal kind of mopped in there so I can kind of get an idea. So this is what you get when you buy an underfloor adapter. It's the same thing it just actuates differently. It's a dual circuit system designed for disc front drum rear. It cost a lot of money. Um, yeah, there was a whole debacle about this. But I think it's just going to be a matter of likely changing this actuator pin. Take this piece off. Someone else can buy that off me if they want it. And then that will bolt onto the, uh, to the new one. So I think way to go. I'm going to take this uh, bracket off, take this uh, arm off and then offer it up in, in the position. Ugh. Need a bigger workshop. Offer it up in position. I think I'm going to use this hole here as a reference. I uh, can't remember what was there. Something. And on the face of it, it doesn't look like anything's going to really Hit, it might extend a bit too far. It might need to go over to the left a little bit. Kind of thinking out loud a little bit here. Bear with me. It's quite heavy to hold and film at the same time, but I'm looking for a more lower inward position, like about here. Oh, yeah, I think that'd be fine.
so that's got that mounted I have to say holding this cast iron master whilst also trying to hold the bracket on the inside and put a nut on or whilst worrying that my piece of wood might give up at any any moment I'm kind of like yeah I'm happy that that's in uh, better check that the uh, the bonnet closes nicely huh? there's no problem with that at all No issues with that fitment at all. I don't actually have a piece which is going to fit that. I need to get, I guess, a short one of those. I don't know how far that's threaded into there. Anyway. So evidently, So the firewall isn't going to be strong enough on its own. So I've got to, I think this would have been tied into the front of the dash underneath on this bracket. It's not going to work like that. I was thinking about tying the brake here the pedal for the park brake in with it. I also, I need to be able to get to the bolts for the hood without taking a bunch of stuff out. And these, so... Thinkity think think. All right. Oh, dragging you along. This, this is how I want to mount, mount this piece, like that. So I want, I'm going to need to mount it in there, in there, and in there. I'm planning on making a plate of steel which kind of comes along here like this has a bend with like a yes yeah, so it chamfers off there so it'll come in here like this and come along here like this so I'll probably put a piece of uh, flat bar on the top I normally would laser cut stuff like this but I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm gonna go ahead and just manufacture this out of some steel that I've got. Put like a couple of welding holes there and weld, weld it to the weld it to the panel in a few places like that. So it'll get welded to this side piece and that's actually a bullet hole there from the other side. Anyway, I digress. And then I'll drill and tap it. To suit. Or I'll weld some studs to it actually. I think that's probably what I'll do on this side so that you won't see the heads the other way. So I'll, I'll drill a hole and then tap it and have it so that the, the stud is coming out. And then across the top to add it, add some rigidity. I'll do that. And then I need to make something so that the cable from the from the brake cable from the brake goes down and out. So I need to like kind of make it so it goes about there. Make some sort of union. I suppose what I'm trying to say is some sort of transition from through here so I can seal it up real nice because it's got to be big enough to get the nuts on the end of it through. So that's kind of where I'm at with that.
As far as I'm going to go today, I need to find a piece of steel for that bit of cardboard I cut out. Good old computer-aided design, but with cardboard. That will leave enough space for everything to work. Well look, I got myself some steel plate today. Cut that. Cut that nicely to shape. It is going to go in there. It's going to give it a tack in there. And then I'll remove the whole assembly, mold it up real nice, and put it back. Well, there's some remedial works to do on this thing. I should have looked closer at it before I started fitting it. The mounting plate is perfect, but everything that goes on it. So, I've just been working on it for a bit off camera. And I wanted to realign these holes. Shit's just not really going to plan, so I'm going to pack it up for a few days. So, I'm back working on this uh, park break. Had a couple of days off. It's one of those jobs where you need to just put it down because you're just going to end up screwing it up even more if you carry on working on it. So a couple of things happened. When I welded it up, it didn't quite work as I wanted it to. I wanted that edge to be kind of there. So it's come a bit too far down. And then there was a piece on the end of here which I straightened out, and then it made this go all catty wumpers here. And it's kind of like just a bit of a, a pig's ear. And I am making a pig's ear out of it. <laughs> I am making a silk purse out of a pig's ear on this one. But what I'm, I've come back to it today, and what I'm going to do is this bottom section of this piece is all going to be cut off. And then I've just started making this piece, which is going to bolt on there, and then there'll be another piece which will weld on there, like that. And that will allow allow me to weld that across there, mark it all out real nice. I think this is a little bit kind of loosey-goosey, so I think all it really needs is a socket to be put on the top of this and just squashed up in the uh, hydraulic press a little bit, and then that should tighten everything up a little bit. I think this, I was told this comes off a, an 80s Camaro, but I looked up an image search and found it's off a 90s like Yukon or something like that. So I originally kind of made it so that it would fit the original piece and then I could just replace the whole assembly, but this is going to be like a one-off bespoke fitting now, which is okay. I'm not too bothered about that. But at least this way I can make it match up this end exactly how I wanted it to.
So that's that bracket bracketry welded on. Go ahead and uh, take it off. It's actually quite good. Good penetration throughout. Filled that gap. That was a huge gap. Yeah, pretty happy with how that's looking. That's kind of nicely in place now. Need to weld that piece of, uh, well, the angle I've made up, need to weld that up. I think I might put a little web across there. So here's the finished piece, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, I'm glad I took a break and came back to it, it's really still quite hot, got that little fillet in there, welded a square on there and then just trimmed it off, I find that's the best most accurate way of doing these things, probably want to just, to make it neat, put a fillet in there between those two tacks, but it doesn't need it, because I welded all across the back just want it to look like it's meant to be there if that makes sense so as if by magic that little weld was done I think I might put this piece in the shop blasting cabinet just to get a nicer finish on it I need to find a spring which is going to go in there and then I need to make a pull rod and handbrake release thing toggle whatever I'll do something nice for that need to squash this down yeah, so there's some remedial works to do on that, but at the moment, I'm happy for that to be used for mock-up. In fact, I'm delighted. So this, this piece, the bracket with which it goes into, is designed to be welded into the truck. That hole there is going to have a plug of weld to offer some rigidity to the uh, service brake mount. I had a spare hour and a half, so I decided to uh, shop blast this. Thought long and hard about how to make that work, and two sockets in a vice did the job. It's tightened it up real nice. It's difficult to show you with just one hand, but that was weeble wobbling a lot before. And once it's got some paint on it and a bit of lube, I thought about striking with a hammer, but if I had a hydraulic press, it would be easier. But. I kind of, I guess I could use this. I could put a piece of flat on there and yeah, I definitely could do that, but I used the vise, whatever, it's worked. Just need to find a spring for that piece and then I can start scheming. I really need to put all of the stuff I want to shop blast in one place. Shop blasting cabinet's good, but all of the dust goes to one end and then you have to lift it up and it's like, have to set the torch up on it and whatnot, but it does a job. That separator works really well. Stops all the all the stuff going into um, the vacuum cleaner, blocking it up. Got that clamped up there nicely, ready to weld. Glad I found that scissor jack.
Oh, well, that's that welded in. Some nice stitch welds and some maybe not so nice ones. Found myself chasing a hole a little bit there, but it's okay. I'm going to give that a grind down, make it look a bit prettier. I guess that's as good as I'm going to hope to get it. I tried to put a nice bead on there, but it just uh, it burned through. It's very thin. But yeah, it should be nice and sturdy. I'm going to put the park brake on now. Hopefully it'll fit. So there it is installed. So that works. I feel like it could probably be a bit closer to the edge there. But I can always just offset the, uh, the pedal. That's fine. I don't mind doing that. In fact... I've got an idea how I want to redo the, the brake pedal. So be a good opportunity to do that really. I'll just crank it over like at this point across. Make it look real cool. Get some paint on that. Yeah, it's just worth trying it out. It's got a couple more little welds to put on. It'll be good to go. It's a little bit of cleanup done. Kind of blew through there. I'm going to do that as ouch. Do that as part of the uh, fire operation firewall hole block up. There's a few of them left on this side. I don't know about that side. Just got to do this side. So it's nice and sturdy on the left. So the plan is I'm going to make a bracket which screws in on the inside under up under here, so that will bolt to the steering column and then it will meet here. So maybe this will get cut back further, but there'll be a plate on here, which will bolt to the plate, which I'm gonna make there. That's gonna be a future thing. So I'm gonna take out the brake booster, remove that now, and then work on this element. Spent some time working on this gear selector. I've gotten it kind of fitted in. So the actual original, the original selector is here. So I've cut all the internals off that. This piece, that arm, will go down to the, uh, can you see it? A bit dark, can't see it. This arm links down to the transmission, which is down in the depths there. But you can't really see it. Kind of see it. Anyway, so, I've coupled it with the original coupler, cleaned all of this shaft up because I had trouble getting that on it. So you've got that spring retainer and this bit with the selector on it. Has some little holes inside there. So the idea being you pull it back and it releases that and you select where you want it. There's three positions, so I don't know if that's park, neutral, and drive. Whether you get like two and one as well. Whether there's a detent on the transmission itself, I do not know. I've got that little hole cut in and everything like that. Did most of that work off camera, but you kind of get the idea what I've done there. I just kind of want to get that working, but I think that's as far as I'm going to go with it. Because in order to address the clearance issue here, I want to raise the transmission up, sorry, well, the transmission and the engine in two minds whether to get a different header or not, not header, manifold. I think that if I raised up the, I think what I'll probably do is unbolt it from the mount I've got, get the, uh, get the lift up underneath it and see where I want it to sit. We've got we've got a little bit of clearance there at the minute, like an inch between the transmission, like, and the floor there. And I really wanted to have that unbroken feature there, but if I have to put a little uh, a little bump, it's not going to be that big of a deal. 
But I think if I can raise this up, the engine up by a couple of inches, maybe, it's going to give me a bit of space to be able to get to that spark plug and uh, a few other things without having to without having to pull the engine. Like you could get a cigarette paper in there at the minute. That strap is kind of touching. So I'm going to rework the engine mounts. I was thinking, do I get a different manifold? One of the Ram's Horns ones, which come up a lot higher. I've seen those. Keep the engine mounts how they are. I'm not really very happy with those clamshell type engine mounts. I've got something different to work with. I'll figure that out another day. I think this is where I'm going to leave the video today. I still got a few bits to do on here. Got to put a nice transition in there. But I think that's enough for one video. As always, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video. I'll see you next time. Bye bye, old buddy. Walking along with this piece, and that grub screw came out. Heard it bounce on the floor. Just spent five minutes looking for it. Walking along, and it was right there on the floor. Got it. And no idea what that thread would be. Probably an Imperial one because it's from America. Well, just happy about that.